as we head towards uh, Christmas, we are going to be looking at the Christmas story for, for three weeks from the Gospel of Matthew. Tunapoelekea Christmas, tutakwenda kuangalia mitiririko mitatu na tukianzia kitabu cha Matayo sura ya kwanza. So we're in this period of, of waiting for Jesus. Um, it's widely known as Advent. It's uh, that period as we wait for this baby that is coming into the world um, as God who took on flesh. Christmas is a time for celebrating, it is a time for giving thanks, it is a time for singing songs, carols, it's a time for gifts. Um, all these things are part of what make up Christmas. Christmas ni muda wa shangwe na kupumzika, ni muda wa kusema asante, muda wa kuimba nyimbo nzuri za Christmas, na ni muda wa kupamba miti na kupeana zawadi. But what is Christmas really about? And the answer to that question is that Christmas is really about Christ. It's about Jesus. Na Christmas ni nini hasa? Christmas ni kumuhusu Yesu, ni hasa kuhusu Yesu Kristo. It is about remembering a time in history when Jesus Christ was born. And we'll look at that from the book of Matthew in chapter 1. Ni muda ambao tunakumbuka kipindi cha kihistoria, kipindi ambacho Yesu alizaliwa. Na tutangalia kutoka kitabu cha Matayo sura ya kwanza. So if you have your Bibles with you, and I encourage you to come with your Bibles, please turn uh, with me to Matthew chapter 1, and we are going to uh, read through the first 17 verses of Matthew chapter 1. Na kama una Biblia yako, fungua Matayo sura ya kwanza, na ni vizuri ukiwa na Biblia yako, tutasoma Matayo sura ya kwanza, mstari wa kwanza mpaka wa kumina saba. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, Judah the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar, Perez the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Aminadab, Aminadab the father of Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab, Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife, Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam, the father of Abijah, Abijah, the father of Asa, Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, Jehoram, the father of Uzziah, Uzziah, the father of Jotham, Jotham, the father of Ahaz, Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah, Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh, Manasseh, the father of Amon, Amon, the father of Josiah, and Josiah, the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. After the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel, Shealtiel, the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel, the father of Abihud, Abihud, the father of Eliakim, Eliakim, the father of Azo, Azo, the father of Zadok, Zadok, the father of Akim, Akim, the father of Elihud, Elihud, the father of Eliezer, Eliezer, the father of Mathan, Mathan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah. Thus, there were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. Nitasoma kwa kiswahili. Matayo sura ya kwanza, mstari wa kwanza, mpaka kumina saba. Kitabu cha ukoa Yesu Kristo mwana wa Daudi, mwana wa Ibrahim. Ibrahim alimzai Isaka, Isaka akamzai Yakobo, Yakobo akamzai Yuda na ndugu zake. Yuda akamzaa Peresi na Zera kwa Tamari, Peresi akamzaa Esromo, Esromo akamzaa Aram, 
Aramu akamzaa minadabu, minadabu akamzaa Nashoni, Nashoni akamzaa Salmoni. Salmoni akamzaa Boazi kwa Rahabu, Boazi akamzaa Obedi kwa Ruth. Obedi akamzaa Yese, Yese akamzaa Mfalme Daudi, Sulemani akamzaa Reboam, Reboam akamzaa Abia, Abia akamzaa Asa. Asa akamzaa Yehoshafati, Yehoshafati akamzaa Yoram, Yoram akamzaa Uzia, Uzia akamzaa Yotham, Yotham akamzaa Ahazi, Ahazi akamzaa Ezekia, Ezekia akamzaa Manase, Manase akamzaa Amoni, Amoni akamzaa Yosia, Yosia akamzaa Yekonia na ndugu zake wakati ule wa uhamisho wa Babeli. Na baada ya ule uhamisho wa Babeli Yekonia akamzaa Shealtiel, Shealtiel akamzaa Zerubabeli. Zerubabeli akamzaa Biudi, Biudi akamzaa Eliakimu, Eliakimu akamzaa Azori, Azori akamzaa Sadoki, Sadoki akamzaa Akimu, Akimu akamzaa Eliudi, Eliudi akamzaa Eleazari, Eleazari akamzaa Matani, Matani akamzaa Yakobo, Yakobo akamzaa Yusufu mumewe Mariamu aliyemzaa Yesu aitwaye Kristo. Basi vizazi vyote tangu Ibrahimu hata Daudi ni vizazi 14 na tangu Daudi hata uhamisho wa Babeli ni vizazi 14 na tangu uhamisho wa Babeli hata Kristo ni vizazi 14. So this is the genealogy of Jesus the Messiah. This means this is an account of his origin, an account of his beginning. Kayo hivi ndio vizazi vya Yesu. Vinaonyesha asili ya Yesu. When a child is born, it is normal to reflect on the heritage or on the family of that child. It is normal to remember, think about what is the history of that child. And we see this here in Jesus' family, the son of David, Jesus, the son of David, giving us a background, uh, giving us uh, an insight into his royal background. Mtoto anapozaliwa ni vizuri kukumbuka mababu zake au uh, chanzo chake. Na hapa tunaona uh, asili au chanzo cha Yesu. Na Biblia inatuonyesha mwanzo wa Yesu kuwa anatokea kutoka ufalme wa Daudi. And notice that when it comes to Joseph and Jesus, Matthew breaks this pattern of father of, father of that he uses throughout the passage. This was because this is because Joseph was not Jesus's biological father like the other fathers in the passage. Na tunapofika kwa Yusufu Matayo anabadilisha uandishi wake wa kusema huyu ni baba wa huyu, huyu ni baba wa huyu. Hii ni kwa sababu Yesu Yusufu hakuwa baba mzazi wa Yesu. Joseph was Jesus's adopted father. So Jesus being included in this family line was through his legal right as an adopted son of Joseph. Niko sababu Yusufu alikuwa ni baba wa kambo wa Yesu na Yesu alikuwa ameasiliwa kuwa mtoto wa Yusufu. Jesus was different from all the other people mentioned in this family because he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was different in that he was born of a virgin. Yesu alikuwa tofauti na waliotajwa kwenye hiki kifungu Kwa sababu yeye alizaliwa kwa uwezo wa Roma takatifu na alizaliwa na bikira. And I want us to look at three things as we approach Christmas 2018. Nataka tuangalie vitu vitatu tunavyoikaribia Christmas ya mwaka 2018. Firstly, let us remember that this time of Christmas is about seeing Jesus as a historical figure. Kitu cha kwanza tumtazame Yesu na kukumbuka kuwa Yesu ni mtu mashuhuri. When someone is born, it is something that happens in a moment in history when his life is connected to the lives of those who have gone behind him, those who are in his present time, and those who are to come in the future. It is a time in history when you are born, when Jesus was born. Mtu anapozaliwa kinakuwa ni kitu cha kihistoria na anakuwa anahusishwa pamoja na watu walio mtangulia au mababu zake pamoja na watu waliopo lakini na watu watakaokuja baadaye and to say that jesus is a historical figure might sound like an obvious statement but not everyone believes that jesus actually exists tukisema yesu ni mtu mashuhuri bado haitoshi kwa sababu kuna watu wengine hawaamini kama yesu amekuepo you might know someone who doubts whether jesus is real you yourself might be here this morning with doubts as to whether is Jesus real. 
Inawezekana unamfahamu mtu asiyeamini kama Yesu amekuwepo lakini pia inawezekana uko hapa asubuhi ya leo na bado una wasiwasi kuhusu kama kweli Yesu amewahi kuwepo In 2015 the BBC reported that according to the Church of England according to a survey done by the Church of England 40% of adults in England do not believe that Jesus is a real person Mwaka 2015 uh, shirika la habari la BBC lilitangaza habari kutoka rekodi za kanisa la Uingereza kwamba asilimia 40% ya waingereza watu wazima hawaamini kama Yesu ni halisi You might say that is the UK that's not Tanzania but there might be some people even here this morning that are questioning was Jesus really real Unaweza kusema hiyo ni Uingereza sio hapa Tanzania lakini inawezekana kuna watu kati yetu bado ana maswali kama kweli Yesu amewahi kuwepo When we look at our history we look at our ancestry we look at our genealogy as we see here Ukiangalia historia au ukiangalia vizazi vyetu au vizazi vya Yesu kama tulivyoona How many of us can trace back five generations? Wangapi kati yetu wanaweza ku kufikiria vizazi vya mababu zao mpaka kizazi cha tano. Okay, two. Viwili. Three. Vitatu. Ten. Anyone can trace back ten generations? Nani anaweza kujua mababu zake wa vizazi kumi vilivyopita? Matthew gives us 42 generations for Jesus Christ. Matayo anatuambia vizazi vilivyomtangulia Yesu vizazi 42. Jesus existed because his ancestors existed. Yesu ni halisi na amekuwepo kwa sababu mababu zake wamekuwepo. And, and ancestry is a big deal across cultures whether you are from an African culture or a western culture the issue of ancestry is a big one. Na kuwa na mababu ni jambo la kawaida na ni la msingi kwa vizazi vyote iwe ni Afrika au Ulaya na limekuwepo toka vizazi hata vizazi. The ancestors of Jesus were real. They are found in the historical record of the Bible itself. If you go to the Old Testament, these people that are mentioned as ancestors of Jesus are there. They were real. Hawa mababu ya, wa Yesu wamekuwepo na ukiangalia historia ya Biblia kuanzia agano la kale utaona kwa uhalisia wamekuwepo because the bible itself is a highly reliable historical document kwa sababu biblia peke yake ni chanzo cha kutegemewa cha habari za kihistoria nelson gluck who was one of the greatest archaeologists of the 20th century he said this scores of archaeological findings have been made which confirm in clear outline or exact detail historical statements in the bible mtaalamu wa mambo ya uchunguzi wa kihistoria bwana nelson wa kizazi cha karne ya 20 amethibitisha kwenye maandiko ya uchambuzi wa kihistoria kwamba mambo mengi yaliyoandikwa kwenye biblia ni ya kweli na yamekuepo however those who doubt that jesus is real often tend to doubt that the bible is real so Now, they'll say well if your source is the bible give me something else lakini ukweli ni kwamba wale wasio muamini Yesu pia hawaamini biblia so kwa hiyo ukiwaambia kwamba unasema Yesu yupo kwa sababu ya biblia watakwambia nipe source nyingine kwamba Yesu amekuwepo so we can look for evidence outside of the bible to show that Jesus Jesus's ancestors were real kwa hiyo tuangalie vyanzo vingine nje ya Biblia vinavyoonyesha kwamba wazazi au mababu wa Yesu ni wa kweli wamekuwepo. A scholar from Purdue University by the name of Lawrence Mikitiuk. He lists 53 figures from the Old Testament, 53 figures from the Old Testament that have been confirmed by archaeology. Mtaalamu wa kihistoria wa chuo kikuu cha Paju ameonyesha au ameainisha mambo 53 yanayodhihirisha kwamba uh, mababu za Yesu wamekuwepo mambo 53 And among those 53 are some of the ancestors of Jesus that we read about here in Matthew King David King Uzziah King Ahaz King Hezekiah King Manasseh they have been confirmed outside of biblical sources. 
na kati ya mambo hamsini tatu wapo mababu wa Yesu walioandikwa katika kitabu cha matayo mfalme Daudi mfalme Uzia mfalme Ahazi mfalme Ezekia na mfalme Manase ambao wameonyeshwa na vyombo vya kihistoria nje ya Biblia so Christmas is also a time for us to remember that Jesus is real. This is not fiction. We're not gathering to a fictitious character. We are gathering to someone who really existed at a point in history and changed the course of history. Kayo, Christmas ni muda wa kutambua kwamba Yesu amekuepo na yupo ni dhahiri na ni dhahiri kuwa Mungu alizaliwa kama mtoto na ni kweli Mungu alijivika mwili. He did come as a baby. He did take on flesh. God took on flesh. Ni kweli Mungu alizaliwa alijivika mwili akazaliwa kama mtoto. Mungu alijivika mwili. Secondly, Christmas is about remembering that God is full of grace. Na pili, Christmas ni kukumbuka kuwa Mungu amejaa neema. It's a it's a worthwhile exercise to to go through the, the, the different people that are mentioned here in Matthew, these ancestors of Jesus. What you will discover is that God uses sinful people. Abraham was a man of great faith. Abraham alikuwa mtu wa imani kuu but he also lied twice to Laki, Pharaoh and to Abimelech saying that Sarah who was his wife was his sister. Lakini alidanganya mara mbili kwa Farao na kwa Abimeleki kuwa Sara mkewe ni dada yake. His son Isaac was also a man of faith who prayed for his barren wife Rebekah and she conceived and and she had twins. Mtoto wake Isaka pia alikuwa na imani na alimwombea mkewe Rebeka but Isaac did what his father did and lied about Rebecca and said she was also his sister. Jacob is the father of the 12 tribes of Israel. He is a great man. He wrestled with the angel of God until throughout the night until his name was changed from Jacob to Israel. Alipambana na malaika uh, malaika wa Mungu usiku mpaka jina lake likabadilishwa kutoka Yakobo kwa Israel. But if you look at Jacob's history he was a trickster who stole his brother's birthright. Lakini ukiangalia historia ya Yakobo alikuwa mdanganyifu aliyenyang'anya haki ya kwanza ya ndugu yake. Judah was one of those 12 sons who was raised up by God as a leader and, and, and King David uh, the great king comes out of the out of Judah's family. Yuda ni mtoto wa Yakobo wa kwanza kati ya watoto 12 ambaye kutoka kwake ndiye alipozaliwa mfalme Daudi. But at some point in his life Judah was a sexually immoral guy who sleeps with his daughter-in-law thinking she was a prostitute. Lakini Yuda ukimwangalia uh, alikuwa na tabia ya uzinzi na ilifikia mahali akalala na mkwewe. Akifikiri ni kahaba. David was a great king. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. Daudi alikuwa mtu aliyependwa, alikuwa mfalme mkubwa na mtu aliyependwa na Mungu. But he also committed murder and adultery. Lakini alikuwa muuaji na alikuwa mzinzi. Solomon his son was the wisest man that ever lived. Manae Solomon alikuwa ni mwenye hekima kati ya watu wote walioishi. But he had 700 wives, 300 concubines and his many wives made him wander away from God. Na alikuwa na wake 700 na nyumba ndogo 300 na wake zake wa kigeni walimfanya akawa mbali na Mungu. Ahaz worshiped idols and sacrificed his son in the fire. Ahazi aliabudu miungu mingine na alimteketeza mtoto wake kama sadaka. His son Hezekiah was a good king. Uh, Hezekiah mtoto wa Ahazi alikuwa mfalme mwema. The Bible says that before and after him there was no king in Judah that trusted the Lord like him. Biblia inasema katika kipindi chake kabla yake na baada yake hakukuwa na mfalme katika Yuda aliyemwabudu Mungu and, kama yeye and he led his people away from idolatry back to worshiping god na aliongoza watu wake kutoka kwenye uzinzi na kwenda kumwabudu Mungu yet towards the end of his reign he shows off his wealth to the babylonians which opens the way for babylon to come in and take the wealth of of israel as plunder 
in the future. Lakini mwishoni mwa utawala wake alionyesha utajiri wake kwa Babiloni ambao baadaye walikuja kuchukua yale mali mateka. Manasseh his son took over. Mwanae Manasseh akachukua utawala. And he was evil. He reversed the spiritual reforms of his father. He worshiped the gods of the nations around them. He burnt his son as an offering and consulted fortune tellers and mediums. Na alikuwa muovu, alibadilisha ibada za kweli kwa Mungu za baba yake, akaabudu miungu wengine na akamteketeza mwanawe sadaka kwa moto na alitegemea waganga na wachawi. This is Jesus's family tree. Hiki ndio kizazi cha Yesu. If you think you come from a messed up family, ask Jesus about a messed up family. Kama unafikiri umetoka kwenye kizazi cha watu wabaya, muulize Yesu kuhusu kizazi chake. You see Jesus understands what it's like to come from a messy, ugly background. Yesu anafahamu nini maana ya kutoka kwenye kizazi cha watu wabaya waliopotoka. And there are a number of women mentioned here as well. I've just spoken about some of the men. Na kuna wanawake pia wametajwa kwenye kitabu cha Mathayo. Nimeongea kuhusu wanaume tu. So there's Tamar who tricked her father-in-law Judah into sleeping with her. Yuko Tamar ametajwa ambaye alimdanganya baba mkoe wake Yuda na akalala naye. There's Rahab, she was a woman of faith who helped the Israelites when they spied the promised land but she was an outsider to them and she was a prostitute Yuko Rahabu aliyekuwa mwaminifu aliyowasaidia waIsraeli walipokwenda kuchunguza nchi ya Ahadi lakini alikuwa sio Mwisraeli na alikuwa ni Kahaba There's the wife of Uriah but Sheba she committed adultery with David Yuko Yuko Uriah Mke wa Uriah Bathsheba ambaye alifanya uzinzi na mfalme Daudi. This is Jesus's family tree. Hiki ni kizazi cha Yesu. You see God can use all kinds of people to accomplish his purposes. God can use sinful people to accomplish his purposes. Unaona jinsi Mungu ana, anavyoweza kutumia watu wenye dhambi kwa ajili ya kutimiza mipango yake. Why does God use sinful people? Because there is no one without sin. You see if God's standard was I will only use those who are perfect, God would not use anyone in this room. And I'll be the first on that list. He wouldn't use anyone in this room. The only one God could use that is sinless is Jesus Christ himself who came to take away our sin. Ni kwa nini Mungu anatumia watu wenye dhambi? Ukweli ni kwamba Mungu angetaka kutumia watu wasio na dhambi, asingetumia hata mmoja katikati yetu. Na hata mimi asingenitumia. Mtu mmoja pekee ambaye Yesu akuwa na dhambi alikuwa ni Yesu Kristo. Why does God use sinful people? Because God is full of grace. Because God gives you and I what we do not deserve. Ni kwa nini Mungu anatumia watu wenye dhambi? Ni kwa sababu Mungu amejaa neema na Mungu ametupa kile mimi na wewe tusichostahili. Do murderers and tricksters and adulterers and prostitutes deserve to be in the family tree of Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior the answer is no they don't deserve it je ni kweli wa uhaji wa uaji makahaba na wazinzi walistahili kuwa katika kizazi cha Yesu jibu ni hapana but because god is full of grace they are there as part of our bible lakini kwa sababu mungu ni mwingi wa neema wako kule kama sehemu ya biblia so when God sees those who have put up their hand and said, I, I want to be part of God's tribe and serve and, and God use me and we get them to stand and cheer for them and do what we're doing today, he knows that each and every one of us who said, Lord, use me, each of us is sinful, each of us is weak, but despite that, he says, I'll use you anyway to show my glory. Mungu anafahamu watu otu anamtumkia hata wale wale nyosha mikono Na Mungu anafahamu wote ni wenye dhambi lakini kwa sababu ya neema yake Mungu alisema ninakuchagua wewe unitumikie ili aweze kuonyesha utukufu wake. 
So does this mean that we just keep on sinning? I mean, is it like, well, I can just sin? No, the Bible is clear that God wants us to stop sinning. Romans 6, verse 1 and 2. Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? We're talking about grace. By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Biblia, Biblia iko wazi katika kitabu cha wa, Warumi sura ya sita. Biblia inasema hapana, tusiendelee kutenda dhambi. Warumi sita moja mbili. Biblia inasema tuseme nini basi? Tudumu katika dhambi ili neema izidi kuwa nyingi. Hasha, sisi tulioifia dhambi tutaishije tena katika dhambi. Through Christ, through the grace that we receive from him, we have died to sin. When sin comes knocking at your door, when sin comes knocking through the, the sinful desires of your flesh, through the temptation of the devil, they find one who is dead, who is not responsive to sin. We, we don't live in sin in the sense that we are no longer enslaved by sin. We are no longer dominated by sin. We have new life in Christ. And yes, we, we may sin, but we are not enslaved by sin. You are a new creation if you are in Christ Jesus. Basi tusiishi tena chini ya dhambi kwa sababu sisi sio watumwa tena tumetengwa tumeokolewa tumewekwa mbali na dhambi na sisi ni wapya katika Yesu. We have a new life that is found in him and the Bible also teaches that sin has serious consequences that sin separates us from God. Na sisi ni wapya katika Yesu na Biblia inatuambia dhambi zina adhabu yake kwa sababu zinatutenga zina zina adhabu kali. It leads to physical and spiritual death Romans 6:23 for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord Dhambi zina adhabu kali kimwili na kiroho na tukisoma katika Warumi sura ya 6 mstari wa 23 Biblia inasema kwa maana mshahara wa dhambi ni mauti bali karama ya Mungu ni uzima wa milele katika Kristo Yesu bwana wetu so, so in the midst of sin God sends his son as a baby he sends his son to come and deal with our sin he sends him that whoever believes in him will have eternal life Kwa katikati ya dhambi Mungu alimtuma mwanawe Yesu alimtuma ulimwenguni ili azaliwe kama mtoto ili azishughulikie dhambi zetu alimtuma ili kila muaminie asipotee bali awe na uzima wa milele The adulterers and the prostitutes and the murderers in Jesus's family tree point to the adulterers and the prostitutes and the murderers and the cheats and the schemers and the liars and the prideful and the arrogant that he came to save in 2018. <laughs> Makahaba wa zinzi wa asherati wa ongo wa danganyifu wote ambao Yesu wamekuja kwa okoa. Jesus has come for us all. This Christmas is a time to remember his grace. Yesu wamekuja kwa ajili yetu wote. Hii Christmas ni muda wa kumkumbuka Yesu. And our final point is that Christmas is about remembering that Jesus is the Messiah. Na jambo la tatu Christmas ni kukumbuka kuwa Yesu ni Masia. Three times in this passage we are told that Jesus is the Messiah in verse 1. This is the genealogy of Jesus, the Messiah. Verse 16, Jesus who is called the Messiah. Verse 17, thus there were 14 generations in all, from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. Jesus is the Messiah. Mara tatu katika ujumbe huu tunaambiwa Yesu ni Mesia. Matayo sura ya kwanza mstari wa kwanza. Hiki ni kizazi cha Yesu Masia. Matayo 1:16 Yesu aitwaye Masia na Matayo 1:17 basi vizazi vyote tangu Ibrahimu hata Daudi ni vizazi 14 na tangu Daudi hata ule wa wa Babeli ni vizazi 14 na tangu ule wa wa Babeli hata Kristo Masia ni vizazi 14. Amen. Messiah in Hebrew 
means the anointed one. And the picture we get is one on whom oil is poured for service. Masia kwa Kiebrania inamaanisha mpako wa mafuta. Maana yake ni yule aliyepako wa mafuta kwa ajili ya huduma. Messiah is the same as the Greek word Christ. Both mean anointed one. Masia ina maana moja na neno la Kigiriki Kristo na yote yanamaanisha mpako wa mafuta. So as we've seen Jesus came from this royal line of Israel from King David. David himself was anointed with oil by Samuel, 1 Samuel 16. You see David being anointed for service to lead God's people and the Holy Spirit comes upon him to do the work of God. Na tunaona Yesu ametoka katika uzao wa Daudi. Daudi uh, aliyetoka katika kiti cha ufalme mwenyewe alipakwa mafuta na Samueli nabii. Samueli sura ya kwanza mstari wa 16. And the Messiah was being waited for based on promises that God had made to his people. Na Masia alisubiriwa kulingana na ahadi za Mungu alizozitoa kwa watu wake. God promised the Messiah through his prophets and one of those prophets is Isaiah who prophesied during the reign of some of these kings in Jesus' family tree. Na Mungu alitoa ahadi za kuja kwa Masia kwa watu wake kupitia manabii na mmoja wao alikuwa nabii Isaya ambaye alitoa unabii wa kuja kwa Yesu. So even in the midst of wickedness, God shows his grace and he uses Isaiah to prophesy about the Messiah. During the time of King Ahaz, a king who did much evil, the grace of God is revealed as this prophecy about the Messiah coming is given. Na ukiangalia wakati wa Isaiah ulikuwa ni wakati wa udhalimu na Mungu katika wakati huo wa udhalimu aliuleta ahadi na kudhihirisha ujio wa Yesu. Uh, Isaiah alitumika pia wakati wa utawala wa mfalme Ahazi aliyekuwa muovu na mwenye uovu mwingi lakini neema ya Mungu inadhihirishwa katikati ya udhalimu. And, and a well a well known uh, passage from Isaiah is Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 and 7 for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father prince of peace of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end tunasoma isaya 9 mstari wa 6 mpaka wa 7 maana kwa ajili yetu mtoto amezaliwa tumepewa mtoto mwanamume na uwezo wake falme utakuwa begani mwake naye ataitwa jina lake mshauri wa ajabu mungu mwenye nguvu baba wa milele mfalme wa amani maongeo ya enzi yake na amani hayatakuwa na mwisho kamwe so a child is born who will have the most amazing names kwa hiyo mtoto amezaliwa atakayekuwa na majina mengi mazuri a child is born who is God, mighty God. Mtoto amezaliwa ambaye ni Mungu, Mungu mwenye nguvu. A child is born who is everlasting. Mtoto amezaliwa ambaye ni wa milele. A child is born whose anointing is not just for Israel. Mtoto amezaliwa ambaye kupakwa kwake mafuta sio kwa Israeli peke yake. But one whose peace and government will have no end. Lakini ni yule ambaye amani yake na utawala wake hauna mwisho. Christmas is about remembering this child. Christmas in muda wa kumkumbuka huyu mtoto. As I was preparing this morning uh, before coming here, just felt God remind me of this song that speaks about Jesus being the Messiah. Nilipokuwa najiandaa kuja hapa asubuhi hii Mungu alinikumbusha kuhusu wimbo unao muhusu Yesu. Jesus Messiah Name above all names Blessed Redeemer Emmanuel Rescue for sinners, the ransom.
ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. All I hope is in you. together. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of Let's pray. Shall we stand? This morning we are remembering Jesus, our Messiah, Lord of all, God who took on flesh. And we should be having the Lord's Supper, if I am correct. Yes, we are having the Lord's Supper this morning. Um, so there'll be two stations, one on my left, my right, on either side. So as the elements come, come up, please come and take the, the bread and the juice, make your way back to your seat, and then we'll take the bread and the juice together as we remember Jesus Messiah. Jesus was born to die. He was born to die for our sins. We can't separate his birth from the purpose of his dying on the cross for us. Asubuhi ya leo tunapokumbuka kuzaliwa kwa Yesu, tutakwenda kushiriki meza ya Bwana. Kwa hiyo tutakuja mbele kuchukua mkate na juisi kwa ajili ya kukumbuka kuzaliwa kufa kwa Yesu. Hatuwezi kutenganisha kuzaliwa na kufa kwa Yesu kwa sababu alizaliwa ili afe kwa ajili ya dhambi zetu. And before we do that I'm going to pray and I'd also like to say that this is for those who have made a commitment to follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This is about a personal relationship where you have said yes to Jesus to his forgiveness of your sins and Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. It's for those of us who have come to that point that are invited to partake at the Lord's Supper this morning. So let me pray and then we'll come up and take the elements, go back and share together. Lord, we thank you that we can celebrate Christmas. We can wait for you longingly. We can wait for that day when you were born, when you took on flesh, when you came, when you came in a time in history that changed the course of all history, when you came from a family line that is broken, a family line that is sinful, so that you could save us from our sins. When you came as the Messiah, the anointed one, as king, not only over Israel, but with the government that knows no end, that stretches over every land, every continent, every aspect of this universe. 
And Lord, I pray for any this morning who haven't yet accepted Jesus as Messiah, that they would accept Jesus today as Messiah. And Lord, we thank you that you died for us, that you gave your body for us, that your blood was shed for us. And today we remember that you were born for the very purpose of going to the cross to die and to be buried in a grave for the sake of our sins. That you took on our sin, you took on our unrighteousness, that we might become the righteousness of God. So Lord, even now we, th we thank you as we remember that amazing act of grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Karibu ni meza ya buwana, ni wakati mzuri wa kukumbuka kwa wale watu walio mpokea Yesu kuwa buwana na mokozi wa maisha yao. Kukumbuka kuwa limuaka damu yake na kutuwa mwili wake kwa ajili yetu. Karibu ni meza ya buwana.